Greetings one and all to the most cursed, most cringiest corner of the internet. A YouTube channel content creator actively alienating everyone in both the analog and digital world. Well, welcome and good evening wonderful dice of all alignments. I am Lunar D8. This is Let's Play Higurashi. She let her, let her gaze break from mine, even as she tilted her head slightly. Keiichi-kun, you don't look so good. I think you should lie down. That's true. We should both head back home. As if nothing had happened, they both giggled at each other and started making their way out. I hadn't moved a muscle since I had dropped the package of mochi. As they left, the door slowly closed behind them. All I could do was stare, as if I couldn't move until the door was completely closed. Just as the door was about closed, it opened again slightly with a sudden creak, sending my heart racing once again. A single eye peered in through the narrow slit, and Mion's hawkish gaze peered at me once again. See you, K Chen. Yeah, yeah. I'd hate it if you miss school tomorrow. All right? Thud. The door closed. I wasn't able to move a muscle even after their low laughter died off into the distance, and silence once again enveloped the room. Coming back to my senses, the first thing I did was lock the door. They knew that Oishi-san and I talked about. Why? How? No, that wasn't important. Thinking about it now, all I could have been overheard from the beginning when Oshan met me. Just as Mion said, I couldn't hide anything. Then what were they trying to tell me? That part was obvious. They were warning me not to say anything unnecessary. What did they deem unnecessary? <clears throat> I only talked to Boshi san about one thing, and they were warning me that that was unnecessary? What was it that Oshi san talked to me about? The incidents involving Oyashiro sama's curse that occurred every year weren't individual cases, but were connected as a whole, as well as the fact that there may be multiple perpetrators hidden within Hinamazawa. No, more precisely, that Mion, Rena, Satoko, and Rikachan were all suspicious. Is that what they are warning me against? What kind of nonsense am I thinking about? I hit my own face hard enough that it let out a slap, loud. If only that would make me wake me from this nightmare. But for some reason it felt like I was punching a blanket. It was almost laughably painless. Calm down, Kaichi Mabara. When did I become such a pessimist? Calm down, calm down. Hmm. I feel the overall vibe of this story is very reminiscent of the P PS4 visual novel Raging Loop. Very good, but very long story. Settle down and sort things out. The reason Mio knew I was eating lunch with Uchi-san was probably because somebody from Hinamazawa just happened to be there at the time. They must have told Mion I was there. That made the most sense. Plus, come to think of it, she didn't ask me where I ate lunch, did she? She only asked, was it good? They were just curious since I was together with someone not from Hinamazawa. It's not as if they had any ulterior motives. That's it. That has to be it. Thinking about it that way, it was the same with Rena. I was just being strangely ambiguous about when I met with Oshisan, and Rena was just correcting me on that. That's when I was bewildered by the change in character from the usual mild manner Rena, and was just startled by it. That's the most natural way of thinking about it. It felt like my mind was mixed up like a tangled mess of spaghetti. 
deep red marinara sauce would have poured out of my nose and ears if you squeezed my head. Thinking that, I suddenly felt like vomiting. I really did want that to happen, so I stopped holding my head. Lately, I had no idea what anyone was saying. Spending time with them was fun. I didn't feel like there was any sort of hidden agenda. I really do think they're a good bunch of people. When I just moved here, I couldn't make heads or tails of everything. They were really kind to me. Rena was really kind and always looked after me. As long as that strange affliction didn't rear its ugly head, she was really pretty cute. Mion is also a really good person. She didn't care about anyone's age or gender and was optimistic and outgoing. I was never bored when I was with her. And talking about not getting bored, rambunctious Satoko was a good person for that too. She was pretty bratty, but that was just the way she interacted with others. Riga-chan was the same way. She didn't speak often, but that didn't mean she was always silent. They're my friends. But after hearing of the better untold secrets, I was out of the Oshisan Tamatakasan. I was told about Oishiro-san's curse. Things started to get crazy. Then hearing from Oishisan that Mion, Rana, Satoko, and Riku-chan were all suspicious. After that, everyone changed. That's right. It all started getting weird after Oshisan told me all that strange stuff. That time, I really should have, should have just not listened to those weird stories, and I even. Shouldn't have heard about the past since of Tomotaki-san, the night of the Watanagashi. If I hadn't gotten that strange sense of curiosity, if I hadn't just... That's right. So that's why they... Killed Tomotaki-san. That important outsider speaking to the likes of me after everybody went out of their way to keep it a secret to me. They'll probably kill Oshiyan-san as well. We're trying to unearth what everybody was warning me about. It's better left buried. Besides that, he was unforgivable for spewing words that made me doubt the others. Of course, a guy like that is going to be killed. Both Tomotaki-san and Oshisan were nothing but outsiders, after all. They were entities who couldn't coexist with the people in Himazawa. Those guys should just fall to Oishamasa's curse and just die. It wasn't their fault. It was my fault for not being able to hold back my curiosity. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. I settled into a daze. It was a lethargic feeling, like I had just gotten up, but the ominous chill that haunted me had subsided. I was fine now. I was no longer frightened. I had completely recovered. I'll go to school tomorrow. Right as rain. I'll greet everyone. I'll take part in club activities. It'll definitely be fun. It had to be fun. I was one of them, after all. Ah, that reminds me. I need to eat those mochi. I hope I'm able to tell which one Rena made. I remember the homework the two brought with them when they visited me. But while our club did delivery, that was something else. I picked up the package I dropped on the floor and headed into the living room. It would be nice, I guess, to have some tea with it. <coughs> to fill my mouth with mochi while drinking tea. Oh, this is quite a delectable situation I was in. Opening up the newspaper wrapping. There were five plump red bean paste mochi fit snugly inside. There were letters written from left to right on the newspaper. A, B, C, D, N, E. Now then, they said Rana made one of these. I wonder which one. There wasn't much difference in how they looked. They smelled and appeared about the same. This was a pretty difficult problem. The biggest difference was probably their shape. I wasn't sure what kind of person Mion's Grandma was, but Rena had to be different from hers. Looking carefully, I could see one mochi that was made very neatly. So well that, just by staring at one could tell it stood out. Looks like this challenge depends on whether or not this one is Rena's. Calm down and think about it even harder. Mion said that her grandma made a ton of them and was told to give some out. 
if I remember correctly. So that meant the four of these from that large bash. Then what about Rena? She probably only made one, so she probably spent quite a bit of time on it. I mean, the one Rena made was this one, E. For a moment I thought it may have been a trap. Mion laid as she knew I'd pick on it. But that probably wasn't the case. I wouldn't be so sure if I knew Mion had made it. But since she said Rena had made it, it probably wasn't a trap. All right, my tea is ready too. I'll start with the defending champ, Mion's grandma. Let's see. Hmm, not bad. The smooth bean paste and soft, chewy texture left little to be desired. The tea I drank afterward also accentuated the experience. This was an exquisite piece of work. Now, how about Rena's? The creation was so delicate, one would think it was a high-class Japanese dessert. Since I normally had quite the appetite, I slightly worried about the size of the portion. But well, first a bite. This was quite a difficult one to judge, actually. The ingredients were exactly the same, so there was little difference in flavor. What was different was how it was shaped at the end. So, it was to be expected. So the defining, deciding factors would be presentation and volume. The well-formed and well-sized champion versus Ren of the Challenger with a size you just couldn't get enough of. I'd only had one bite of Rena's. I would probably have to wait until after I was done eating to make my decision. Maybe there was something hidden inside that would cause an upset. Chew. Chew. Hmm. It seems my prediction was right. My tongue touched something. It didn't feel like something edible. So I reached in with my fingers and grabbed it. What? What was this? Before I could fully comprehend what it was, I threw away the rest of the mochi I was eating as fast as I could. It slammed against the wall, causing the bean jam to splatter. Then after sticking for a moment, it slid down to the floor. I was dumbstruck by my own actions. What was I doing? Rana had gone out of her way to make it for me. How could I? Dumbstruck, I looked down at my hand that performed such a vile act Then I remembered what I had taken out of my mouth. <clears throat> at first, I thought it was a hair. Even though it was shorter than Mion's, Rena's hair was still quite long. And it wasn't this short. It was also a bit too hard to be hair. It was thick enough to roll around on my tongue. There was a bit of a metallic sheen on one end of it. Ah, yes. There was a hole for where thread goes through. Like it was a sewing needle. Yes, that's right. It looked very much like a sewing needle. Exactly like one. The end was pointed as well quite sharply. It really did look just like a sewing needle. Huh? What did I mean by looked very much like a sewing needle just a bit ago? <coughs> I couldn't answer, but a voice inside me already knew and let me know by chattering my molders together. I couldn't stave off the terror welling up inside me. Suddenly, I tasted something metallic and felt a prickling pain at the back of my throat. I stuck my finger in the back of my throat and felt around to see if I was bleeding. Suddenly, I felt the urge to vomit. The sharp taste of bile irritated the back of my throat. I clasped both hands over my mouth, and after writhing agony, I was somehow able to hold back the nausea. I was finally able to breathe normally again, but this time my heart was intensely throbbing. 
Then it finally registered exactly what was mixed in with the mochi. Before I could think of the correct word, my hands were already on the move. Splat. Plop. Splort. I tossed the rest of the mochi against the wall. The geometrical patterns of the scattered bean jam on the wall suddenly invoked a terrible omen in my mind. After looking away, I dashed away to the hall and flew upstairs to my room, where I stayed under my covers till morning. I clutched my own shoulders, howling madly, in a mix of fear, anger, sadness, and frustration. This wasn't a threat, or a warning, or a reminder. Nothing as simple as that. What had happened in Inamazawa? What is happening in Inamazawa? What would happen? I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Where did I break a taboo? Regardless, now Rena and Mion and others, they consider me an enemy. And they thought, I should just die. I won't let you kill me. Not for such a pointless reason. I fell into a restless sleep as I was crushed by my negative emotions. It was as if I was being drawn into a billowing, bottomless marsh. Let's cut to the chase. Is there a drug that causes someone to kill themselves? Not directly, no. That's quite a roundabout response. You're saying there's one that does indirectly. Something that puts you into a mental state, like that? That's hard to say. What would a mental state be? Like a person with a serious bipolar disorder. It's a belief that people are more likely to attempt when swinging from depression to mania. Clinical depression and bipolar disorder are different. Clinical depression indicates a prolonged state of depression, whereas bipolar disorder is characterized by a passive depressed state accompanied by a very active manic state. Individuals with clinical depression suffer from low self-esteem and are quite pessimistic, but rarely commit so they do not have the willpower nor does mania on its own lead to that has an opposite effect filling the person with confidence and making them feel as if they are walking on air. Thus they do not. That's interesting. Neither state causes. When the condition changes, they might do so. There is a desire when a person is state of depression, but they do not have the willpower to commit such a formidable act. But when they enter mania, they gain a burst of willpower and their body moves as they desire. I see... So it means they gain the willpower. That's how it goes. That's why patients are given sedatives during that time, to keep them from acting on their impulses. Then was Tomotaki-san bipolar. People who suffer from bipolar disorder generally commit by more civilized means, like, say, hanging or jumping off a building. Self-harm as though going through withdrawal is completely different. Death wasn't civilized. So one thing was caused by some foreign substance. As I said from the start, tell me of a, a drug. There are reports that methamphetamine overdoses produce a condition that resembles bipolar disorder. It's a stimulant. Barbiturate overdoses are also reported to cause erratic behavior. That's a sleep aid. There were no signs of stimulants. Are there any other possibilities? All I can think of is some sort of illness. Something like Graves' disease, which affects the thyroid and is known to cause symptoms that resemble bipolar disorder. But Graves' disease has many characteristic symptoms of its own. The disease exhibited none of them. I wonder, is there something that could have happened spontaneously 
something that fits this case would cause someone to suddenly want to. Are you familiar with organic mental disorders? In short, it's a condition where the brain is out of whack due to physical injury or illness. They can be caused by drugs, but it can also be caused by physical trauma, encephalitis, a stroke, or even tuners. Basically, even without a drug, one can succumb to an irregular mental state. The deceased was surrounded after being chased, and his life was in danger, right? All that stress could have messed with his brain. Chemistry he could have hit his head. Those factors combined could have caused him to mutilate himself. It's a possibility. Could you explain it to me in simpler terms? Bwahaha. Basically, he knocked his noggin in the brawl, and they made him go haywire. Then his lady didn't have any intent to kill. Just smacked him in the bad place, and when he necked in some change, the two plot men laughed hoarsely. But of course, it's not like that. Mm. Undoubtedly, if it was habitual drug use, it was something mental. Deceased body holds the key. How are things on your end? Oh my goodness, look at the time. I need to get back to Skuma-chan. will get angry with me. Yeah. Good luck, best wishes. Best wishes. Hmm. Those guys just now, they had national diet badges. Then it's Prefectural Assembly Member in City Council Sonazaki. That's interesting. Prefectural Assembly Member. Related. It's dirty is what it is. Shouting out each other's name during elections. Which one is up for election? The other one holds an assembly. And they double up their campaign activities. Blatantly. I don't know much about the stuff, but isn't that against the rules of the election? As long as they have no prior consultation, there are no restrictions on their political activities. Kuma-chan, the investigation division, is going to be pretty tough for you. You should at least brush up on election policies. I'm not suited for intelligence division, because I'm dumb. Eh. There was a professional assembly member, Sonazaki, and the city council were Sonazaki, also the mayor of Hinamasawa. All of them involved in the Sonazaki family. What crap. Looks like they were seen off by the department chief and the deep chief. It came to me. That night when the chief invited me to get some Odin, I thought that was it. You have a lot of connections, so you might have heard something. Did you? Nope. Not a thing. Ma'am? I'll take a tofu fritter and a fish cake. Uh, Councillor Bart at me, in the police chief's stead. Oh my, is that so? Ma'am, I'll take another bowl. Prefecture Assembly Member Sonazaki and City Council Sonazaki were both intimidating. Our snot nosed career police chief couldn't even handle being yelled at by them. They're like Yakuza. A petition with your name came up regarding how the investigation of the Mezawa incident is being handled. Goodness me. I have not the faintest. No need to play dumb. You are reopening the past cases regarding Hinamazawa, aren't you? I've already got my hands full of Tomotaki's death, actually. Really? If that's true, then there's no problem. There was a period of silence. While we were silent, we made headway on our food and drink. Phew. That was quite the feast. This month has been a bunch of losses for me. So I wallet's feeling the pinch. Much appreciated. Nah, it's nothing. Tell me a good horse again. I'll bet on the same one as you. I haven't been doing well there lately. Haven't been able to read the horses at all. Taxi. I'm going by train. The police chief is taking a taxi. I have my own car, but it'd be rash to drive it home. Can't blow it right before retirement with a DUI. Even though he could still rattle off, it looked like his legs were already goo. Pushing him into the cab, I gave the driver the police chief's address. Well, see you again tomorrow. Happy New Year. Oishi-san. Yeah, yeah. The past incidents have all been closed. Stop lumping them all together. Those villagers half believe it really a curse. Well, I'm not convinced. You're going to be retiring next year, aren't you? Weren't you going to pay off your mortgage with your pension and move up to Hokkaido with your mom? Mother pines to return to the land of her birth. It's the least I could do. 
and the pension, well, it'll let me enjoy myself in Susikano. The police chief may issue a special retirement salary raise, he says. A public servant's pension is calculated based on their monthly salary. So if you were to get a raise before your retirement, your bonus to your salary would be inflated. You'd get a hefty, heavy surplus of funds. That tends to be how it's done around here. Of course, it's not a custom that's thought of highly. The difference between the bonus and the pension is quite a bit. I'd expect nothing less exemplary from our egghead chief. But, well, they say our salary is compensation for our hard work, but the end of it really just has to do with our passage of time. That's not something I can laugh at, but I'll laugh through it anyway. I don't think anything is exemplary. But given how hard you've worked, it's not odd that you're getting that much of a pension. I'd like to get that much myself. If I can get it, of course I'd want it. You'll get it. You're an adult, after all. Sorry for holding you up, driver. Thank you very much. I close the door roughly, inter inter interrupting the chief's conversation a bit rudely. It looked like the chief was still had something to say, but he just smiled wryly and waved. I waved in return. The cab sped off gradually and soon disappeared among the sea of lights. Oh man, I wonder if I really can repay that loan. The sound of muffled footsteps stopped in front of the door to my room. A moment of silence, as if whomever they belonged to was ascertaining if I was inside. Of all the things I should have been doing, I continued on my restless slumber. I was very much conscious, but my body hadn't caught up yet. even with danger bearing down on me from just beyond the door. It was as if I was completely paralyzed, unable to move. Without a doubt, this was sheer terror. Please, just leave. Hey, why isn't my body awake yet? If they came to my room right now, then... Eek. I sprung to my feet and threw my covers at my mom, who was opening the door. Whoa. Keiichi? What's the matter? Ah, uh, sorry, I was still half asleep. I thought it was still 1 or 2 a.m., but the morning sun had already streamed through the gap between the curtains. It felt like nothing like morning. Yesterday I must have fallen asleep right after that. Then I should have gotten a full ten hours of rest. But it didn't feel like that at all. My internal clock was completely screwed up, and my sense of balance felt off. I felt feverish enough that it was clear to me that I was still not well. Well, Kaiichi, how are you feeling? Can you make it to school? I was well enough to go, but I wasn't mentally prepared for it. I was still plagued with terror from yesterday. If I had swallowed that needle, what would have happened? Or what would have? What if it had pierced my tongue? There was undoubtedly a murderous intent, but I don't think that's all it was. If they really wanted to kill me, then there were other, more certain ways to do it. They wouldn't resort to such a dubious method, such as having me swallow a needle. Meaning, I didn't want to believe it, but going that far was just a threat from Rena Mion. Aren't you glad you didn't die? But next time, we'll use a more assured method. Like that, something like sending a letter with a razor inside would have been a joke compared to this. Did you make it to the hospital? Did you take your medicine? Yeah, kind of. So my mom's dubious gaze bothered me. She seemed more concerned about her son missing two days of school rather than him being sick. It was definitely mental fatigue. I wasn't really physically ill. 
It's hard for you to get back on track once your daily routine is thrown off. Come on, get on up. They say illness is a state of mind. I'd heard that line many times before. I was given an award in elementary school for having perfect attendance, but it wasn't like I was healthier than everyone. Come on, go wash your face. Breakfast is already ready. Come on. There isn't much time before Rana Chan comes and gets you. Mom's tone meant that I couldn't argue about it, so I had to give up on skipping a second day. By the way, were you the one who got bean paste all over the room wall cages? You shouldn't do something like that. Your father was quite angry. I didn't feel particularly guilty for doing it, so I didn't have much of a reaction. Also, Mom didn't question me any further about it. She headed back downstairs after she was certain I was getting up. What Mion said, as she left yesterday, I'd hate it if you missed school tomorrow. I came back and dwelled in the back of my head. What did she mean by that? I didn't even have to really think about it. She was saying, don't be absent. Taking that a bit further, it was the same as her saying, I should just go about living my life as if nothing happened. If I showed any signs of acting unusual, it would probably result in them making their move. For example, maybe... I shouldn't pay attention to someone like Oshisan enticing me with something unusual. Meaning if I didn't watch my mouth or did anything different from norm. In effect, it would end up flagging myself as someone who was not wanted. I know I've mentioned it before, but in many video games, there are different flags you can activate in the game. Especially red flag events. And it seems that was something the girls didn't intend to forgive. So, if I just went along as normal, no harm would come to me. Was that how it was going to be? All that misery I experienced up till yesterday would almost creepily have just fade away? It was an enticing deal. Just for forgetting everything I'd seen or heard these last few days, I'd be able to keep on living like normal. There's no way such a selfish thing could. I swallowed hard. I once again deliberately deliberated <clears throat> on the idea that I had just rejected. Mia was probably a good person who had her friends at heart. She was giving me who had mistakenly broken some rules of theirs a chance. Was what I did really something so unforgivable? But Mion had given me another chance. She was saying, If I just forgot everything and kept living like I had been, I'd be forgiven. KHC, your food is going to get cold. Hurry up and get down here. Ren will be here if you don't hurry. I'm coming. I crammed my textbooks in my bag, hastily made my way downstairs. I picked up my somewhat bland breakfast. It seems I didn't have much time. It was already past time. When I usually met Rena, given yesterday's event, she'd probably be here in the next five minutes. I needed to be ready for school by then. I had to forget everything that had happened in the past two days. Forget it all and return to my normal life. For this to be normal, I'll be where I normally meet Rena. Today of all days, the rice was dry and hard to get down. Ding dong. I jumped to the sound and dropped my chopsticks. The chime signaled that Rena had arrived. Mom hurried me along. Come on, Rena Chan's already here. Hurry, hurry. My mother's merry smile and gloomy face were polar opposites. My. Honestly, I was reluctant to see Rena, who was waiting on the other side of the door. The Rena on the other side was the Rena I knew. I couldn't keep her waiting. I needed to do things as usual. Morning. An invigorating greeting filtered in from across the doorway. I came since Kajin was a bit late. Will he be okay today, I wonder? I wonder. The manner in which Rena was concerned was without a doubt the Rena I knew. But that was probably only if I reciprocated. Forget everything from yesterday, pretend as though nothing had happened. Forget about the gruesome dismemberment. Forget about the mysterious deaths that happened the following years. Forget about the people falling to their death. And the terminal illness and suicide and lynching. And the disappearances. Forget it. Forget all of it. Forget that Rena and Mion were scary. Of course, forget it all. Forget about everyone. Forget about the mochi, too. Forget, forget, forget. Rena once again asked to make sure. Can you make it to school? Yeah, I'm fine. 
Great. Then let's go. Mi-chan is waiting. Miranda showed me her usual bright smile. I couldn't find any hint of deceit in her expression. My nervousness dissipated, giving way to relief. But you see, Sotoko, Chan was insistent she could do it. As we were walking, Rena talked about a lot of different stuff more than usual. Hmm, then? Sotoko Chan is clumsy, so she failed no matter how many times she tried. She was so cute. Everything Rena talked about was just silly nonsense. So I just replied every so often, laughed time to time. It was a rather laid back conversation. We passed by one of our neighbors, and they called out to us. Oh my, cage son, Renishan, aren't you two bit late today? Mion said she was going on ahead. We're not walking that slow. Uh oh, did Mi Chan look mad, I wonder? I wonder. We need to hurry up, cage son. As we smiled, we parted ways our neighbor, and we turned back toward and stuck out a tongue. Not expecting that, I couldn't help but crack a smile. Ah, Cage soon smiled. Ah, well, what? Rana stopped and stared at me. I was thinking that you still hadn't recovered from your cold since you seemed down this morning, Cage, but now you seem fine, fine. With a grin, she gently poked my cheek. It was a bright, sincere smile. Hey, Cage, you mother. How can you still doubt Rana after she shows you a smile like that? Maybe I just had a high fever up until today. And I imagine everything that had happened because I was bedridden and delirious. I really hope that was the case. If God would grant me just one wish. There's only one thing I'd wish for. I would want what had happened in the past few days. More specifically from the night of the Watanagash up to last night. I wanted all of that to have never happened. I wonder how many times I wished for these in the past few days. As long as Rena kept smiling like this, I think it might just become reality. So I wanted Rena to keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Okay, Chikun. Those mochi yesterday. Did you eat them all? The vain wish of mine instantly shattered. My heart began palpitating, and the relaxed morning mood became frigid. Renda's smile was the same as usual. Her eyes were gentle as usual. Those mochi yesterday. Did you eat them all? Of course, she wasn't asking the question at face value. In other words, Renda was asking, Did you get the message? She was probably trying to convey that. Kei Chikun. I was reluctant to get an answer. Rena stopped walking and stared deeply into my eyes. Ah, don't don't hesitate, Kei Chikun. Rena was acting the same as always, wasn't she? I needed to respond in my usual way. Naturally, of course. But both my throat and mouth had gone dry and my lips were stuck together. Hurry and answer, Keiichi. Not that much time had passed. I could still keep the conversation going naturally. I had to say something quickly. Deh. Deh? Rana playfully mimicked what I said and finally squeaked something out. Rana's reaction was still normal. It seems that there wasn't long a pause I thought. So I finally squeaked out the rest. D delicious. However, my strained efforts neither sullied nor brightened Rana's expression. For a moment, I panicked, thinking I had replied incorrectly. But after a few moments, Renna broke into her usual soft smile and giggled with a joyful voice that seemed to echo through the morning air. Being strung along by that laugh, I couldn't help but laugh as well. I see. So did you eat all of them, I wonder? I wonder. My timid smile froze again. Did you make it? Without swallowing the sewing needle? Was that what she was asking? If I had swallowed it, then I wouldn't be here. Nah, I couldn't finish all of them. There's still some left. I was scared out of wits, but that's how I played it. Huh? What about the homework to see which one I could tell what Rena made? Ah, uh, the homework. Was it due today? Yes, it's due today. Misha won't get angry. There's probably a penalty game ready for you. We both laughed at each other again. To a casual observer, it was just a typical morning. If I could just let myself believe... Then, even I'd think it was just the usual morning routine, but I was certain I wasn't mistaken. There was something unimaginable buried beneath the facade of this giggling. Rena. Lies. 
I recalled that unexpected piercing voice that could hardly believe that it came from in his mouth. The moment that image crossed my mind, I felt a cold sweat trickle down my back. Was it only that particular time that something evil had possessed Rena? No, that was wrong. That was still Rena. Oshisan told me, didn't he? Actually, I looked into her. Poor Ryuasan moved away. She was suspended from school. It seems she went through her school building and broke all the windows. Rena had a disorder that normal people didn't get. No matter how much pleasantly she smiled, the fact would not change. But I couldn't even imagine how she looked as she broke all the glass throughout the school. One thing I knew was that it was, wasn't was something spur of the moment. If it was some sudden outburst of anger, then maybe she'd be able to break a pane or two. <clears throat> but she broke all of the windows all throughout her school. Just imagine going through your own school breaking the windows with a bat. Swinging full force at each pane of glass, one after another, paying no heed to the flying shards, your classmates aghast, unable to move from the sudden turn of events. I wonder where she could have found the most windows lined up in a row. Probably the hallway? Smash, walk, wind up, smash, walk, wind up. It was difficult for me to connect that horrifying image with the Rena smiling at me right now. But I just had to imagine it. Impossible, because it was unimaginable. That naive way of thinking no longer worked. The unpleasant, piercing sound of shattered glass. The crunching noise as Rena treads across the broken shards, walking towards me. Rena's classmates going pale, as they forget to even breathe. I wondered what they did as Rena came closer, breaking windows along her path. Did they earnestly try to bring her to their senses by saying something? Or did they jump at her trying to stop her savagery? Or did they run to the staff room after being directed there by the teachers? Probably none of those. In the face of a blood-curdling sight of Rena bursting window after window, undoubtedly all they could do was silently clear a path for her. Dumbfounded, just clearing the path for Rena to continue. It was far too violent an act for them to seek refuge by looking the other way. That's not to say they were looking the other way. They were doing the only thing they could do to protect themselves. If they'd done something differently from the rest, they may have suddenly found themselves as Renan's new target. What would Renan have done to whoever attracted her attention? The answer was obvious. She had undacted, undoubtedly acted according to her whims. Meaning, they would, I would, be the next window. Ren is staring in my eyes, shards of glass crunching and crackling underfoot as she drew closer. I was also drawn to her eyes, paralyzed. Then Rena struck me with the bat over and over again, like I was one of the windows. I crouched down to the floor, desperately trying to protect my head. Rena didn't care whether it was my head or my back. Zealously, she hits me again and again. What kind of expression was she making as she was doing this over and over again? I peered up to see. Her expression was so indifferent, it was completely unnerving. It's because no matter how many times she struck me, I didn't make as pleasant a sound as the other windows. She struck me continuously, over and over again. The sound Rena wanted didn't come out. Our classmates standing around didn't try to stop her. They didn't want to be the next window. Somebody saved me, turning a blind eye unless we're hanging out. But of course, everyone in class scrambled to attain the highest standardized test scores. They'd gain nothing from saving a cram 
school tryhard like me. Eventually there would be a faint sound similar to when you crack open a walnut, and some sort of reddish black spray would shoot out. Anyway, it wasn't that Rana momentarily lost herself in her anger. After forcing myself to breathe and calming down my heart, I recalled what Oshisan told me, and in the counselor's medical report he recorded that all of the conversation he had with Renaissance, it shows up. And quite a bit at that. What does? She mentioned. The word Oyoshira-sama. Following that, Rena was suspended and had regular examinations at the hospital. Then, as Rena was undergoing counseling, she said it over and over, Oyoshira-sama. It seems that Oyoshira Sama she spoke of was a ghost appearing in her house every night, standing over a pillow looking down at her. That was only a piece of the conversation, so I still couldn't see the big picture, but it was by no means a happy little conversation. Then, what Rena did was she saying that gas incident was a result of her being possessed by Oshira Sama. Up until now, I didn't want to believe in Oshira Sama's curse. That's why I wanted to say the mysterious deaths every year happened because of some sort of conspiracy. Every time I talked with Oyoshi-san, I was more certain that the deaths were the work of men and not of some curse. Except, if it was people perpetrating the incidents, my friends were somehow deeply connected. If I refused to believe that the curse was real, then I would have to believe that those who acted the kindest to me were deeply involved in these incidents. Why? How? For what reason? Was Rena? Was everybody? It was much more painful and troublesome than accepting it was just Oshirosama's curse. In the aftermath, Rena had admitted to her doctor that it was because she was possessed by Oshirosama. I felt a strange sense of relief from that. So that's how it was. There wasn't a second side to Rena. She did that. Because she was possessed by something strange, like Oshirosama. It wasn't Rena's fault. Oyoshira-sama was the one to blame. I knew. This was all backwards. Refusing to believe there was a curse, I wanted there to be a human perpetrator. Now that my close friends are the ones under suspicion, I changed my beliefs at my own convenience, saying I was Oyoshira's curse to blame. Which was the better choice, accepting that Oyoshira-sama's curse exists, or that Rena and the rest of them were deeply involved in the string of mysterious deaths? I didn't want to think about it. If I just didn't think about it, I'd be able to continue the same as always. I wanted to believe that, but that was no longer possible. I had received their message. It was pathetic of me to try to bend the meaning to my own convenience, regardless of my opponent being a human or a curse. I won't let it kill me, as if I would just bend over and give in, for no good reason at all. Keiji-kun? Okay, 